So as I was mentioning, the best way to understand Euler angles is through an example. So let's do one. So imagine that I give you a coordinate system E0 defined by the unit vectors capital EI and another coordinate system small e defined by the unit vectors small ei. So here is a picture of these two. Okay, so let me label them. So this is uh, E1, that's E2, and that's E3. So this is the blue coordinate system. And the other one is E1, capital E1, capital E2, and capital E3. Okay, so that's the E0. And the question is, relate these two. Relate this coordinate system and that one. Why would I want to do that? Well, uh, one of the reasons to do that uh, is that suppose I have a uh, rigid body uh, at some point of time, let's say time t0, and I have the same rigid body okay, at some other point of time, and it is at time t1. Then uh, can I relate the orientations of the rigid body here and here? Okay, and by that I mean, of course, that I have a, a BFCS sitting here. Let's call that E1, E2, E3, and I have the same BFCS, but now in some other direction. Okay, uh, let's see which what will happen here. It's supposed to be the same VFCS. Okay. And uh, we have to relate these two, quad, I mean, the way we relate these two uh, rigid bodies is by relating these two body fixed coordinate systems. Uh, it could also be that I am, uh, I have a fixed a global coordinate system. Okay. And I am trying to relate. Uh, this is my global coordinate system. Let's, uh, and I'm trying to relate this coordinate system to this one because by doing so, I can follow the rigid body motion in time, as we will see subsequently. So there are many reasons why you would want to relate two coordinate systems, okay, which are shown over here. I have not shown the origin. It re really doesn't matter. Now to begin with. Uh, if I have given you two coordinate systems, capital EIs and small EIs, then you can find, after so much discussion, you know how to find a rotation tensor relating these two coordinate systems. How can you do that? Well, the rotation tensor is simply given by uh, E, no, got that wrong, by E j dot E i e i tensor e j right so this rotation tensor is known what we are required to do is find an euler angle sequence for this rotation tensor okay so that's what we are going to do now so as i have already mentioned there are infinitely many euler angle sequences for the same r so the first step is to select an appropriate Euler angle sequence. So which one should we select? Well, that depends on the problem at hand. So for example, if you were doing planetary science that or spacecraft attitudinal dynamics studying artificial satellites, then the right one to do is the right one to choose is the ZXZ Euler angle sequence. It is also called the 313 Euler angle sequence. So what is this sequence? That's what we're going to study now. So the sequence has to prescribe has to prescribe these com three combinations of rotation axis and rotation amounts. So that's what we mean by prescribing an all angle sequence. So the first step is to choose the first one, the first rotation axis and the amount of rotation. So step one is take the rotation axis A1 to be capital E3 and rotate by an amount phi. That means we go over 
we start with the black coordinate system and we rotate by an amount phi okay and this will give me a new coordinate system right i will find a new coordinate system which is not going to be the which is not going to be the blue one just yet it's going to be an intermediate coordinate system which is going to be defined by some unit vectors ei prime which i am going and i am going to give it the name e prime okay and the new unit vectors ei prime will be related to the capital eis by relationship like this over here in this picture the black unit vectors will rotate and i will get a new unit vector you know new unit vectors which will be in some direction like this okay so i'm just going to draw them over here okay and since the rotation is about e3 so this one remains the same okay right and this is what i am calling as e1 prime e2 prime and this one becomes e3 prime okay so that's step 1 is i have produced and i have produced a intermediate coordinate system e prime by the first euler rotation okay that's the first one second one the second one i choose the new axis of rotation and the second axis of rotation to be the new e1 prime that means the next rotation is about this axis and by how much by this amount theta 2 which i take to be theta okay so i am going to rotate about this by an amount theta just to kind of i forgot to indicate this angle is phi that angle is phi okay so i have to rotate now about e1 prime by theta that means i should uh, first draw this plane here so these axes will rotate around e1 prime okay will i reach the blue axis yet not yet because we have to have three rotations then only will be will we be able to reach the blue axis so this one is again an another another intermediate axis which i am going to call i am going to draw it first okay and uh, maybe i'm like this and the now you would be a little anxious to see that the okay that the new axis so to say is uh, along the blue one the new these two are aligned okay somehow i'm not getting the red uh, just right don't know why Okay, that's what I would like. Okay, that's better. Okay, right. So that's the new red axis. Okay, which is I'm going to call E double prime. So let me just give it some names, and then I'll come back and address. And uh, since I'm rotating about E one prime, so this axis remains the same. Right. So E one prime and E one. double prime remain the same right and uh, e2 prime becomes e2 double prime and i get an axis e3 double prime and this rotation theta is by theta that's theta i choose it just so that the axis e3 prime coincides with the desired axis e3 so i can choose this theta just in the right way okay all right so are you with me i hope you are 
I have done two rotations and I have produced two intermediate axes E prime and this new one which is E double prime okay and so far my black unit vectors one of them has been able to align itself with E3 the final rotation is I have still not aligned my red unit vectors with the blue ones okay so the final one is to align these two which will be step 3 which is I take the third axis to be the most recent third axis E3 double prime so this is going to be my final axis of rotation and I rotate by an amount psi so that means I go around this by an amount psi and when I do that I will do it just right so that this comes in the right direction okay and because E3 double prime is already is uh, you know we are rotating about E3 double prime so it remains the same and what happens is that I get my third axis E3 to be the blue axis now drawn and E1, E2 and E3 are now obtained. Okay, This is psi, psi. Okay, so that is the Euler angle sequence that I have just implemented and this final axis is what we wanted is E. Okay, Now all through what have we done? So let me kind of uh, create some space here, let me delete this, Okay, let me delete this also. Okay, let me shift this up a little bit okay, and let me write down something. So in the first sequence over here I grabbed the original uh, Cartesian coordinate system E0 and applied the rotation about capital E3 by an amount phi. So this rotation rotated the unit vectors capital EI to give me intermediate coordinate system E prime defined by small EI prime and I had this EI prime will be equal to R phi about E3 by an amount phi dot EI. So that is clear that is the first rotation. Then the second rotation I produced EI double prime by rotating by an amount theta about the new E1 prime that is the x here see the first one is z the third axis right E3 the second one is about E1 prime that is the x by an amount phi no not phi theta and that is it that is the second rotation and the third one is to reach EI I rotate about the new 3 axis by an amount psi ok. So look this is Z this is X this is Z this is the old z intermediate x intermediate z to get from capital E's to small e's ok. So this is the path that I take. I can combine these three equations to get that E i is r psi dot r theta dot r phi dot e i right which is the rotation tensor e i. We have discussed in an earlier lecture then the multiplication of rotation tensors remains a rotation tensor ok. So what we have seen is that successive Euler rotations provide me a rotation tensor the one which I wanted to go from E0 to E which is what I have written over here. 
that from E0 I apply the rotation R phi. R phi is a shortcut or shorthand notation for rotation about E3 and by amount phi to get intermediate axis E prime. Then I apply the rotation R theta about the R theta is shorthand for rotation about the current x axis, the current E1 prime by amount theta to get E double prime, another intermediate axis. Then I apply R psi, the final rotation about the current z axis, the current E3 double prime by an amount psi to get the final coordinate system that I was after E. And this is the rotation tensor R written in terms of three successive rotations and which constitute the ZXZ or 313 Euler angle sequence 3 1 3 okay let me quickly show you this uh, Euler angle sequence again in a prettier picture than this one okay which is this so let me run through it again once more okay Euler angles are never easy unless you have done them 45 times so we start with the black coordinate system which we call E0 we rotate the black coordinate system by an amount phi about E3, which is this. We obtain the pink coordinate system given by E1 prime, E2 prime, E3 prime. We call this pink coordinate system E prime. Note E3 prime is the same as capital E3. Okay. Then we rotate the current intermediate coordinate system about the current E1 prime by an amount theta to obtain the red coordinate system given by E1 double prime, E2 double prime, E3 double prime, okay, which is given by this equation. So we have the rotation tensor R theta about E1 prime and amount theta operating on the intermediate coordinate system to produce yet another intermediate coordinate system called E double prime. This guy, In this case E1 prime and E1 double prime are the same. The final one, we take hold of the intermediate coordinate system E double prime and rotate it by an amount psi about the current E3 double prime, which is this one. And when we do that, we obtain the final coordinate system which we were after, the blue coordinate system E given by small ei, okay, which is, and in this case, E3 double prime and the final E3 coincide. I have shown you also in this figure the planes of rotation. The first plane of rotation is the grey one. The second plane of rotation is the pink one. And the third plane of rotation is this orange red one. Okay. So this is what we call is the 1, 3, 1, 3 Euler angle sequence. Okay. Sometimes also called ZXZ. To remind you 313 because first rotation is about E3, second about E1 prime, third one about E3 double prime. Okay, These are very common pictures for any kind of Euler angle sequence. I have only given you the first example.